Yo, what's going on guys? It is time for another reaction video. And this one is gonna be history of England explained in 12 minutes. That's, that's a lot of uh, info to cram in 12 minutes, but hey, let's check it out. Let's see what I can learn today. This video is brought to you by Captivating History. The history of England is one of invasions, cultural revolution, and change. When the ice age ended and the sea levels rose, the low-lying land of modern day England was swamped, creating an island. It was first inhabited by modern humans during the Upper Paleolithic period, but took its name from the Angles, a Germanic tribe from the Anglia Peninsula who settled there in the 5th and 6th centuries. The Iron Age followed the Ice Age, when hunting continued as a source of food, but farming technology developed, allowing the nomadic peoples to create settlements and early farmsteads began to appear on the landscape. Named due to the use of bronze and copper to create tools, weapons, and decorative items by peoples known as the Celts, the Bronze Age existed from 2500 until circa 800 CE. It was during this period that large stone meeting places, or henges, such as Avebury and Stonehenge were constructed. Eventually, the Celts came to the attention of the Roman Emperor Julius Caesar, who sent a military expedition to England in 55 BCE but failed to conquer it. The Romans succeeded in 43 CE when Emperor Claudius successfully led an invasion. That's a pretty brutal picture there with those heads hanging on the, uh, the stick there. And they ruled England as a colony for the next 600 years. They brought with them elements of their own civilization. They constructed roads and cities with forms, baths, aqueducts, and theaters. Traders and craftsmen arrived and the Anglo-Roman population grew. In 120 CE, Emperor Hadrian commissioned a massive wall between England and Scotland. It's crazy for me when I see stuff like that 120 CE, just like how much older, how much more history there is to European countries and to England and Britain overall, um, versus here in the US, obviously there is the Native American Indians uh, that were here long before it was settled into America. But our history as Americans is not anywhere near uh, as long as a lot of these other countries. So seeing dates like that and trying to envision what the U.S. would have been like at that time is is just like kind of mind-boggling to me um, how much more history there is in other countries. To dissuade attacks from the Picts and Scots, known as Hadrian's Wall, it marked the northern border of the Roman Empire. As the empire began to crumble, troops were withdrawn from England to defend Rome. But in 410 CE, it fell to a Visigoth army, and England was left to defend itself. Forty years later, around 450 AD, Vortigern, a local ruler, invited Danish mercenaries to defend his area of England from attacks led by the Picts and Scots. However, the Danes turned on their host, and established the first Saxon kingdom of England. Other mercenary groups invaded, resulting in the establishment of a patchwork of rival Saxon and Angle kingdoms that were continually at war. These rivalries were known as the Dark Ages, a period where Anglo-Saxon art and literature, inspired by Christianity, became refined. This period was violently ended by the constant invasion of Viking armies, who established settlements and took over Saxon kingdoms. Eventually, after many battles, the separate kingdoms were unified under the reign of Ethelstan, and a united England was created. In it's crazy to me, like, to think how many wars in the history of man have existed and originated solely for the greed of land like I mean it just happens over and over again it's happening right now in, in the Ukraine with Russia like you would think we're an advanced enough uh, at this point where like why do we need to rob and steal countries of their land like it, it, it makes no sense to me. I mean, I can see way back then that, you know, being the ruler of the land and even still, it doesn't, it doesn't justify like all the lives lost solely just to have claim, state claim on a piece of land. It's, 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 it, it's crazy. 
Sorry. In 1066, on the death of Edward the Confessor, three men vied for the English crown. Harold I, the man who took the throne, Harold Hardrada, King of Norway, and William of Normandy. This rivalry led to two invasions. Harold I defeated the Viking army at Stamford Bridge, but was defeated himself at Hastings by William, who on Harold's death crowned himself king on Christmas Day, 1066. To control the defeated Saxons, William gave vast tracts of land to his own lords and constructed a number of large stone castles. To raise money, he instructed that a detailed inventory be taken of all English lands, an undertaking that became the Doomsday Book. William was succeeded by King John, who, believing he was above the law, forcefully took what he needed from the people. However, the barons disputed his demands, and in 1215 they presented the king with an ultimatum, a document that became known as the Magna Carta. The year after its signing, King John died, and in 1216 his son, the nine-year-old Henry, inherited the crown. During the next hundred... Did they say nine-year-old? The year after its signing, King John died, and in 1216 his son, the nine-year-old Henry, inherited the crown. During the next hundred years, England was scourged by the plague, known as the Black Death, and responsible for killing one-third of the population. Wow. In 1485, when Henry Tudor defeated Richard III at the Battle of Bosworth Field, the Tudor dynasty began. Henry VII ruled wisely, but after... I did start the Tudor series at one point, never finished it. Um, I have it on like DVD or Blu-ray, I think, the whole, season, the whole series. I need to go back and watch it. It was super interesting, but at the time when I was watching it back when it was being released, I think I saw maybe the first season or something, and then by the time the next season came around, I kind of forgotten about the show. It wasn't like these days where you can just stream everything. Um, that was released on like HBO or Showtime or something. Um, but I need to go back and watch it because I'm sure I could learn quite a bit just by watching that series. And I know some of it's going to be uh, loosely off course of the the real thing, but I'm sure for the most part they probably stuck to the the main facts. After his son Arthur was killed, he decreed that his younger son, also called Henry, should marry Arthur's widow Catherine. The wedding followed his and his son, the 18-year-old Henry VIII's, subsequent coronation. After 20 years of marriage and one daughter, Mary, Henry divorced Catherine as she had not produced a son. To ensure the divorce, he broke with the Catholic Church and declared himself to be the head of the Church of England. In 1533, he married Anne Boleyn. This marriage resulted in another daughter, Elizabeth. Three years later... I think that's some of the parts that I, I, I remember seeing on the Tudors, if I'm not mistaken, because I just remember the name Anne Boleyn. I, I think that was in that show. He had Anne tried for treason. She was executed at the Tower of London in 1536. Henry VIII married six times. During his third marriage to Jane Seymour, he fathered his son named Edward. Jane died shortly after her son was born. In 1547, Henry himself died, and Edward, who was nine years old, inherited the crown. But when he died, aged just 15, the crown passed to his cousin, Jane Grey, who was forcibly deposed after just nine days by Mary. Edward's elder half-sister, who wanted England to revert to Catholicism. She died childless in 1558, leaving Elizabeth to become queen. Under Elizabeth I, the navy, established by Henry VIII, developed into England's major form of defense and became the means by which England explored, colonized, and traded around the globe in a prosperous period called England's Golden Age. Elizabeth never married, dying she indicated she wanted James VI of Scotland to succeed her. So, in 1603, James VI of Scotland... All these outfits they're wearing are so freaking fancy and just like knowing how hard it was to sew or make things back then, I could only imagine like the amount of work that went into wearing these wardrobes, man. Like nowadays, you, it would still be challenging, but when I mean, we have modern technology that can make that kind of stuff quite a bit easier... But if this is like legit how they were dressing back then, that's just crazy. Like to think of the craftsmanship and 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 all by hand, it's it's amazing. Sixteen oh three. I mean, that's 
It's crazy. What's this? Six hundred years ago. Scotland became James the First of England. His personal debts and Catholic baptism were the sources of some dissension, and gave rise to the infamous assassination attempt known as the Gunpowder Plot. His successor and son, Charles, took to the throne in 1625. He believed God had created him king, and due to that belief, he did not trust the English parliament. And between 1629 and 1640, he dismissed it, choosing to rule by royal decree, a situation that led to the English Civil War. Charles I was tried and found guilty of treason on January 26, 1649, and beheaded. The war ended when Cromwell's Parliamentarian New Model Army defeated King Charles II's Royalist at the Battle of Worcester on 3rd September 1651. Charles was exiled, and the monarchy was replaced with the Commonwealth of England and then the Protectorate under the personal rule of Oliver Cromwell. Cromwell died in 1658, and his son, Richard, became Lord Protector, but he lacked his father's talents. In May 1659, he resigned and Parliament arranged for Charles II to take the throne. It's he resigned, and Parliament... I'm not trying to make fun, but does that dude not look a little bit like Weird Al Yankovic, or is it just me? I don't know. Maybe it's the hair, That's it, but that's immediately what I thought when I saw him. Parliament arranged for Charles II to take the throne. In 1685, when the Catholic James II took the throne, several English politicians objected and wrote to William of Orange, a popular Protestant who had married James II's daughter. He accepted the offer and landed at Brixham on November 5, 1688, and began a march on London. Before he arrived, James II fled to France, and William was crowned on April 21, 1689. I'm seeing here is that, like, the change of, of crown takes place pretty rapidly, and so my question is, are all of these at the hand of death and is it that they died and then that they were succeeded and were these natural deaths or were they killed uh and taken uh taken taken the position from them um because it's it seems to be like every two to year two years four years six years somewhere around there alongside his queen mary the second the couple ruled jointly until mary's death in 1694 William lived on for 10 years, dying in 1702, when Mary's sister, Anne, ascended to the throne. When Anne died in 1714, the Georgian period began, named after the four Hanoverian Georges, and includes the short reign of William IV. It is a term used to describe the social and political history, architecture, and fashions between 1714 and the 1830s, a period of the start of the Industrial Revolution that began around 1769 and lasted into the 1840s that helped to make England one of the richest countries in the world. However, it was also the period when England lost control of its American colonies. When Queen Victoria came to the throne in 1837, aged 18, she was the ruler of Great Britain, Canada, Australia, India, New Zealand, and parts of Africa. That's amazing like those are some of the I, I didn't know about some of those locations um came to the throne in 1837 aged 18 she was the ruler of great britain canada see i, I wasn't from, aware of canada australia australia i knew of india new N didn't know india new zealand and new zealand i did and parts of africa um, what parts of Africa, like British East Africa, so the right side, German East Africa. I need to look at a, a new map now and compare and see what's there now. Man. Her rule heralded an unprecedented series of inventions and discoveries. When she died in 1902, her reign had seen the invention of steam power, industrialization, and major advancements in the arts. The 20th century began with the death of Victoria, succeeded by her son, Edward. Edwardian England was a period of decadence and enjoyment. However, his reign only lasted nine years. He died in 1910 and was succeeded by his son, George V. The causation of the First World War 
1914 to 1918, was long and protracted as each European country found themselves dragged into the conflict after Germany declared war on Russia on the 1st of August 1914 and on France three days later. On the 4th of August, Britain too declared war. When it ended in 1918, on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, it had wow. been the deadliest conflict in human history. As an outcome of the war... And for what? Just, just because people wanted a piece of land? Like all these people died for a piece of land? I mean, there's got to be better ways, man. It, it's sad. It's just really sad. The war. Some women, who had worked at jobs usually filled by men, were granted the vote in 1918, whilst all women gained the same voting rights as men in 1928. Post-World War I England underwent a period of unrest when different industrial workers went on strike for better working conditions and higher wages, leading up to the General Strike of 1926, which was followed by a financial crash known as the Depression. In January 1936, King George V died and was succeeded by his eldest son, Edward VIII. However, Edward had fallen in love with a divorced American woman, Wallace Simpson. Even in the 30s, a member of the royal family was not allowed to marry a divorcee, and as Edward refused to break off his relationship, on December 11, 1936, he abdicated, passing the crown onto his brother. War broke out again in 1939 when England stood firm against the aggression of Nazi Germany. It ended in 1945, and the reconstruction of London and England began. In 1951, the Festival of Britain was staged to celebrate national recovery. The 1960s saw a huge social and sexual revolution with the invention of the pill and when groups such as the Beatles led youth culture and swinging London led the world in fashion trends. It also saw great technological... It's been awesome kind of seeing the, you know, the, the, the progression on this video from just, just how people dressed, how, what was available. Now we're seeing computer chips, but at the beginning of this, we were seeing like castles. Um, man, it's just a lot of history crammed into this 12 minutes. ...advances, such as the moon landing, supersonic flight, the joining of the EEC, and the establishment of London as a global financial center. However, as the 20th century came to an end, England's power began to wane. Where its future and global position in the 21st century lies, only time will tell. If you want to learn more about English history, then check out our book, History of England, a captivating guide to English history, starting from antiquity through the rule of the Anglo-Saxons, Vikings, Normans, and Tudors to the end of World War II. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. Also, make sure to grab your free Mythology Bundle ebook for free while it's still available. All links are in the description. I might have to pick up the, uh, the audiobook of that. Um, it's really interesting. Um, if you're new to my channel and you like these types of videos, I'm going to be doing a lot more of them. So make sure to subscribe, and if you have any that you can suggest to me, tell me in the comments of some other videos like this that you'd like to see me react to. This is a little bit uh, different for me, so it, the reactions I've typically done, are a lot of them are revolving around music, but I'm trying to make a little bit of a shift and be a little bit my, more diverse with my reactions. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of open to suggestion if you guys have some other stuff I should be checking out. Um, right now I'm focusing on uh, Great Britain, so it doesn't have to only be Great Britain, but if you've got some stuff I should check out, I, I want to know, you know, music, culture, um, food, uh, past, present, you know, pretty much anything and everything there is to know about Great Britain, England, UK, uh, send it to me. Comment below, tell me uh, some things to check out. Um, I, right now I think I've got a list of about 20 videos. Um, but I'm sure there are a lot more of them out there. Uh, somebody asked recently about sending me um, food to try. If that's something you want to do, uh, my address is in the description below, uh, my mailing address. So if you want to send me something, yeah, I would, I'd be uh, happy to 
to accept some stuff and maybe if I can take that and turn it into a video and see, you know, me trying some snacks and, and treats from uh, England for the first time. But uh, yeah, I'll wrap it up there and I will see you guys in the next video. Later. Later.